I'd like to welcome everybody to Tuesday, November 1st, um, regular meeting for Hyde Park Town Board. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Can we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have any public comments on resolutions and town business? The time is three minutes. I would like to read a statement. You probably don't want to hear that, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right? Yes. No? Okay. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. I would like to set the record straight after being defamed at the last meeting. I will comment only on a few points so as not to take up too much time nor start a tit for tat. First, of course I know there is a budget procedure and a budget process. Being the process should be started several months before the, uh, the presentation of the tentative budget, I raised the question starting in September about the procedures and made it clear that I wanted to be involved in it. Jim made it clear that we would be invited to the talks related to the departments for which we are liaisons. Actually, the whole board is responsible for the whole budget and therefore should have been involved wherever possible. I'm an active liaison to many groups, but they don't have budgets, so I was not included in any of the smaller group discussions. Second, the mantra for the past 10 months is that we're all new and we're all learning and we're all adjusting to new tasks and the new um, roles we're in, and that is true. Traveling for me is a lifestyle, uh, so adjustments for my lifestyle and the new tasks need to be considered. I was away on a trip that was planned more than a year ago, September 2021. At that time, we weren't even elected, but the, board, um, but the town board meetings were regularly scheduled on the first and third months of each year. So I tried to plan my trips around those dates so that I could be here for all meetings. The regular schedule continued until July when the schedule mm -hmm. changed to once per month with special meetings as needed. I couldn't change my plans by that time. I had submitted the list of dates that I had plans for um, before the January 1st swearing in. Thirdly, the budget process is known, and I know that. However, there was a meeting on Monday, October 3rd, at which time the budget was not presented. But the next day, Tuesday afternoon, I received a call to ask if I could be available on Wednesday morning for a special meeting because the budget had, not, had to be presented. <coughs> Then I was told another special meeting was scheduled for October 17th for the preliminary budget presentation. Yes, there is a process and a full timeline, and yet the meetings were set up hastily by a phone call one day after a full town board meeting for the required meeting of the next day and for the 17th. Fourth, at the special meeting at which the tentative budget was presented, there were glaring inaccuracies. For example, the report stated that the Hyde Park Library had not submitted its budget. I pointed out as, um, being as that being incorrect, and Jim stated publicly that he had not received the budget. In actuality, he had received it in August, and there is an email to confirm that. Then there were zeros. Jim said that after being questioned following the meeting as to why there were so many zeros, he said that it was a, the computer wasn't working accurately. He had not explained that when he actually presented the budget at the meeting, and he changed his explanation during the last meeting saying that they were legacy lines. I don't understand this discrepancy. I'm not going to respond to any of the many things that were said about me, but I want to say that the budget and the finances of the town are the primary concern of the board. Therefore, I would like it done transparently, completely, and seriously. The preliminary budget is certainly better than the tentative budget, and I hope that we can go forward working together towards the same goal of sustainability and growth for our town. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Anyone else? Are you opening a public hearing for the budget? This is just public comment on agenda items. This is just public comment on agenda items, right? 
Yes. Okay, there's no other comments. Then we had the public hearing for the uh, beginning January 2023 budget. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Does she have to read it? Notice of public hearing. Please take notice that the Town Board of the Town of Hyde Park will conduct a public hearing on November 1st, 2022 at 6.05 p.m. on the preliminary budget of said town for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023. A copy of said preliminary budget is available at the Town of Hyde Park Town Clerk's Office at Town Hall, located at 4383 Albany Post Road, Hyde Park, New York, during the hours of 8.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m., Monday through Friday, where it may be inspected by any interested person. The proposed salaries for the calendar year of 2023 are as follows. Town Supervisor, $43,063. Council Person, $9,453.50 each. Town Clerk, 66810 Superintendent of Highways, $84,063. By order of the Town Board of the Town of Hyde Park, dated October 17, 2023, Hyde Park, New York, Donna McGrogan, Town Clerk. Are you opening for comments? <laughs> yeah. Do I sit here? You can, yeah. I hope everybody has the budget in front of them. Can you hear me? Yes. If you don't, you should. Uh, good evening, Supervisor and Town Board. I am Joanne Lown, the former bookkeeper and controller for the town where I prepared budgets for the town for over 30 years. I retired as of the end of last year. I appreciate that your budget as prepared keeps the levy under 3%. Hyde Park, like most towns, have benefited from large increases in sales and mortgage tax, which helps keep the rate down. For example, Rhinebeck was able to decrease the tax rate by 9% because of these revenues. I'm a little confused though and have some questions on your prepared budget, which is both online and available at the town clerk's office. I see you all have your budgets, so can you follow along? On page 16, which is under the police department. Police retirement. If you're following along, it would be the 13th item down. You show in the 2023 preliminary budget an estimate at 245,000 for the total cost of retirement for our police department. Again, 245,000. This is a gross underestimate and here's why. If you look, the history demonstrates the actual cost in 2020 was 358,940. 2021 was 416,915. And projected for this year, 470,380. As we know, each year these expenses go up. And the Office of the State Controller's website projects the rate for 2023 will be 19%. Because the police is scheduled to receive an increase as per their contract, a substantial increase should be expected and shown in the budget. My calculation of 19% based on the wages should put this number at 560000 Again, you have 245,000. The shortage is 345,000 alone. This is substantial and res would result in a 7% increase in our tax levy to pay for this. 
Clearly, you need to adjust your expected tax increase and pass the required local law to exceed the tax cap. Page one, under revenues. Again, if you're following along, the sales tax for actual for 2022 shows zero, meaning you have not received any tax revenues for sales tax this whole year. Sales tax, just so you know, is electronically submitted to the town's bank account each quarter as per our agreement with the county. And these are fixed amounts. Because of that, I know that you should have received the first and second quarter at an amount of 453306 Can you explain where these funds are in the budget document? or why this has not been accounted for. Page 44 or 46, fired tax. Under 2022 actual, the year to date shows zero for the tax levy. The tax is normally collected in March and remitted to the town supervisor. Like the budget for the sales tax, this document fails to show any fire taxes received in 2022. My question is why? Where are the monies not, why were they not received? Or were they assigned to another category? Are you just not aware that they were remitted? I'm sorry, what page was that again? Page 44. Thanks. 45 is library tax. Same situation as sales tax and fire districts, a zero. Same question, why does this budget not show the taxes that were received? The last specific item I'd like to bring your attention to is recreation. On page 22. Halfway down is playgrounds and camp. There's no amount listed for staff expenses. Was camp held? Were the staff paid? If the answer is yes, which we know is correct, then there is a major flaw. The lines all show zero for actual 2022 expenses. Without proper posting and accounting for expenses, the books simply are not adding up. Your year-to-date expenses cannot be correct. I do understand this your first time preparing a budget of almost $16 million. And there will be some glitches, like the one when you as a board approved the tentative budget on October 5th. It was fortunate that I was here picking up a copy at the time and found that there were zeros all underneath the tentative column. In essence, you adopted a zero budget. Well, this in itself is disturbing enough. The real shock was when the supervisor told me that I should go to his super or his controller and let him know. I might mind you that if you look at New York State town law, it appoints the supervisor as the chief fiscal officer. So it is your responsibility to assure that our town's finances and responsibility are responsibly managed and accounted for. As a final point, there have been some statements made that attempt to deflect your inconsistencies. I strongly suggest you review the 2021 independent audit of the town prior to making any statements that cannot be backed up. As anyone can see, the town was in excellent financial condition as per this audit and I please encourage you to follow the same. And I have a copy of this statement for each of you so you can reference it. And one more thing, um, in August I came in front of the board to just kind of, I thought I would be
being nice and explaining to you where the two, the million, $2 million was a fund balance. And um, I offered my services and I offered them because, you know, I love my town. I'm a volunteer in this town. I would do that to help you. And instead, the next meeting you decided to criticize me. So I take back my offer. motion to close the public hearing so moved second second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed Development area plans for the Belfield project. Larry, you want me to hold when you get them on? I can put them right here. Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you for um, taking the time to be with us tonight. Um, my name is Larry Boudreau with, with Belfield, Kelly Leibaltz to my left, and then Jennifer Van Tyle. I'm going to just speak real briefly to why we're here and then turn it over to Kelly and Jennifer uh, to handle the planning and the legal uh, part of the presentation. Uh, so again, we're here for two reasons. One is um, the open development area which which you just mentioned that is um, a legal mechanism that allows the this board to look at the roads we're developing in Belfield they're all private and and this is a mechanism to ensure that these roads are built to a standard uh, uh, in fact the standards that are they're identified um, come from the town so we looked at the profile for the road sections and and of course the planning board will review that for width and, and dimensions and that kind of thing um, previously the ODA was approved we had five roads one through five and what's being presented here is an extension of those five roads all five roads will be maintained by the master HOA which we're, which we're working on. The second reason why we're here is um, a variation which we're requesting the town board to consider on height. So the plan that we submitted to the planning board, uh, we identify the buildings you know, with a bunch of numbers. So all the buildings are compliant to height except numbers one through six or 100 through 600 so we'll present those tonight uh, the 
the uh, uh, approved height for buildings 100 through 600 is 46 feet and we vary from 47 point 47 feet 4 inches to 53 feet we're going to show you where they are on the plan um, uh, so you can understand that and with that I'll turn it over to Kelly Thank you. good evening um, we had I'm Kelly Leibolt with KARC planning consultants um, we did provide you with a copy of the presentation um, all of the information in here is existing information um, that the board has uh, either received or um, is in the packet as part of the ODA and variation application so this is just a copy of the presentation up here for the public to be able to see so um, I know uh, this town is obviously very familiar with this application but I just thought I'd take two minutes to go back a little bit and just remind um, the town how we got to where we are today so if you recall um, this is a copy of we, what we call the Hart Howerton plan which is the concept plan that was approved um, by the town board which is the concept plan uh, for this particular project the Hart Howerton plan consists of several different neighborhoods as you can see on this plan um, just orient everyone on the bottom of this uh, drawing is route 9 the culinary Institute is on the other side of the street uh, st. Andrews is right here and so this is this entire project um, there are several different neighborhoods that comprise um, the project um, currently and I'll show you on the next slide we're focusing on the village neighborhood so that's why we're here before you <coughs> So this is um, just a slide showing our project over the Hart Howerton project so that you can see it's very hard from this slide I understand but it is nearly consistent with the design of the Hart Howerton plan so there are several phases um, there is some ongoing construction as you drive by the site that you will see um, I think most prominent is phase one of the project which is over here on the right of this slide and that of course is the um, hotel I think everyone sees it is either a purple or a blue building today um, so that's the ongoing construction on the other side of the site although it's um, relatively more difficult to see because it's screened is the wastewater treatment plant and so that is actively under construction as well uh, tonight and before this board and the planning board we're focused on phase two which is um, this project area that we've outlined so in phase two in the village neighborhood is 356 residential units there's 177,000 square feet of non-residential space and 106 is the hotel that's actively under construction um, there's 445 residential units and uh, 546,000 square feet of non-residential remaining. remaining sorry access is um, there are improved access points so there's the signalized intersection which is the primary access there's a secondary um, ingress egress which is located near the wastewater treatment plant and of course there's the um, other primary access point which is off of West Dorsey um, infrastructure for the site obviously is the water sewer uh, storm electric the site is approximately 40 acres there's no wetland disturbance proposed as part of this um, portion of the site and we've met the development mix ratio for this portion of the site as required in the concept plan we did provide um, the planning board with a copy of this drawing and it shows the site and the buildings that are comprised for this particular <coughs> development and we also have um, what we would call a bulk requirements table at the bottom that just outlines each building the proposed use for each building the square footage um, etc this drawing was primarily used by the Planning Board but we thought it would be useful to you if you had any questions relative to what is the primary purpose for each building so as Larry had indicated there's two goals um, for this evening one is to discuss the open development agreement and I'll go through each of these and the second is to um, discuss the variations 
So we'll start with the open development agreement. As Larry had indicated, it's sort of a um, more complicated word than what it actually uh, covers, and I think the nomenclature doesn't really line up with what we're actually doing. So an open development agreement is a fancy term um, that describes the mechanism to allow the development and operation of private roads in a development project. So if um, an application were before, before the planning board, they would actually have the roads designed and approved and they would be consistent with town board standards and requirements. And those roads uh, customarily would be designed and built and then transferred over to the town. In this particular situation, the applicant is designing roads that also meet the town uh, highway requirements. But in this particular scenario, the roads are staying um, as the ownership uh, to the property, so they'll be owned and maintained by the master HOA. In order to facilitate that mechanism to allow the development of private roads, um, there's a document that's called an open development agreement. So in 2018, the um, open development agreement was established and uh, the Section 1 Open Development Agreement has, um, was approved. At that time, uh, the town board agreed that for each section of development, an Open Development Agreement would need to be reviewed and approved. So the document that we provided to you nearly mimics the Open Development Agreement that was reviewed and approved by the town board for the first section. The process for the Open Development Agreement is that the board, uh, this board, the town board, accept um, the application. And so that's where we are tonight. We provided you with the application. Um, the town board would accept the application and you would refer it to the planning board for their recommendation. Um, after the planning board completes their referral, they would come back, um, that referral would come back before your town board and then we would reappear in front of you again for the approval of that um, agreement. The second um, purpose uh, for our visit here tonight is to discuss uh, the variations. And again, um, the variations were um, defined and described in the concept plan that was approved and in the zoning that was approved by this town board. Variations are set very similar to area variances. So I think very commonly in development, we hear about area variances, which are deviations from the zoning. And since the zoning was described by this town board and prescribed by this town board, the variations and any uh, modification to the zoning needs to be approved by this town board. Um, the variations and the application of variations was specifically described in the 2007 original agreement. There are six buildings, um, again, as Larry had indicated, that we're seeking a minor increase in the height of the buildings. And so, although difficult on this particular drawing to see, they're buildings 100 through 600, and they're situated in the back, or what I would call the east of the village neighborhood. And this is just simply an elevation of those particular buildings. As Larry had indicated, these are minor increases in the height. So for building 100, we're asking for a height increase of one foot, four inches. For building 200, we're asking for a height of five foot, four inches over that what's permitted. For building three, we're asking for an increase of seven feet. For building 400, we're asking for an increase of six foot, six inches. For building 500, we're asking for an increase of four feet. And for building 600, we're asking for an increase of six feet. What I'd like to do is just show you, um, I know it's hard to see on this particular uh, drawing, but I'm not sure if I brought this on the plan. What we um, did try to provide was, um, this is a rendering of buildings 100 through 600, and we drew a line across the top of the buildings to show where 46 feet um, would run across the uh, rendering, so you could get an idea of the portion of the buildings above the 46 inch height in many instances, the portion of the building is the roof line, whether it's a pitched roof or a mansard roof, um, and is a de minimis increase over the other buildings that we see throughout the site. The height increase is largely due to the way that height is calculated um, in the town, which is a um, height above the average grade taken every 10 feet.
The buildings that we're referencing, again, buildings 100 through 600, sit a significant distance off of US Route 9, and there are several buildings that are situated in front of the buildings in question. And so um, on this particular plan, again, US Route 9 is on the bottom of the page. The buildings that we are discussing are numbered um, 600, 500, of course, as you go south, all the way down to buildings 100. As you can see um, from our survey information, the buildings range anywhere from 664 to over 880 feet away from US Route 9. In addition, there are several buildings, um, the buildings on the opposite side of Main Street, the buildings on the opposite side of Main Street, and the parking deck, um, as well as the city winery, are located in front of those buildings that we're asking for the variations. So similar to the process um, that we had previously defined for the ODA, we're here tonight um, for the town board to accept the application, to also refer this application to the planning board for their recommendation, but to also refer this application to the county planning department for general municipal law. And in addition, this um, request for the variations does require a public hearing, and we're asking that the town board tonight schedule the public hearing for the December 12th. Um, town board meeting. Um, we did provide you with a few other um, renderings and elevations in your package. This is a view of this particular property looking slightly above US Route 9. Um, difficult to see. We, we look at this over and over and over again, so it's, it's easier for us. But in the front, you have um, there's extensive landscaping in front of the parking deck. This gray building in the back is um, the west side of the parking deck, and we're working with the planning board to provide some screening in the form of metal panels. So you see these trees that are located um, on the side of the parking deck. It's actually embedded in the metal panel. Behind that, you see the west side of the buildings on Main Street, and in the distant in the back, you see the roof line of the buildings further back, numbered 100 through 600. Um, we do have some renderings here tonight. We actually have the full-size board. So this is the rendering of the full site. If you're really standing um, kind of on the intersection of West Dorsey and um, US Route 9, really where the hotel construction is looking uh, northeast. The buildings that we're discussing for the variations are these buildings located, as I said, on the east side of the site. This is a view of the main street, again, bird's eye view looking east. And again, these are the buildings that we're referencing for the variations. These are buildings 100 to 200, which are further to the south of the property. And then buildings 500 to 600 that are furthest to the north. And so this just um, provided us with a framework of the next available board meetings for the planning board and the town board, so we had those for reference. So we're happy to answer um, any questions that you have um, or anything relative to the process. <coughs> oh, I just had one, if I could. Oh, what was the reason for having to raise the, the height of the buildings as opposed to uh, dropping them down lower for your original height. Do you want to address that yeah. or do you want me to? Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> a sketch was provided when we were doing the concept plan and the garage height in that sketch was 10 feet. When we got into doing the actual design with the, with the grade, it shoots up pretty good as you go west to east. We made that floor to floor instead of 10 feet, we made it 14 feet. So that's four feet right there in, in, in difference. That's the main reason. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Yeah. I don't have a question, I just wanna say, I think it's looking great. I was so <laughs> impressed with the hotel in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's very exciting time to be out there right now. And as Kelly was saying, uh, the hotel is going up, but the wastewater treatment plant is going down because it's because it's buried. So it's, it's very exciting. The increased height, it's non-living space. It's just- Correct. It's mainly 
the garage going from the 10 feet of 14. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. The floors remain the same. It's three over one of uh, parking garage. The, the terminology that you use since they're what they, you call private roads inside the development, these roads can never be um, turned over to the town. Would that be a correct statement? They're, they're going to be maintained by a master HOA, and the way that works is it's, uh, everybody in the neighborhood contributes to the, fund, the budget to, to, to maintain that. Yeah. To the public. I'll just state also that the, um, the decision that these roads would always be private and not be uh, turned over to the town uh, was part of the original seeker review of the project in 2007 and the idea behind that was that everyone knew there would be a very robust uh, homeowners association to maintain it and also there was a concern to make sure that this project would never be a burden on uh, the taxpayers in terms of maintaining the roadways in the site and so while uh, one could maybe in the abstract question a decision to uh, require that roads be publicly uh, operated but privately maintained. That has never been uh, questioned by the developer and we certainly don't question it. Um, we've always considered that part of the project but I think that was the reason to have publicly accessible roads but to assure that the benefits of the increased tax base would uh, go to the bottom line <laughs> for the town and be a benefit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The only other the only other question that I have is, you know, it's it's a lot to digest. So, the town attorney, of course, by they say and have the board review it and approve the application. Has the application been reviewed by our town attorney to well, make sure? Well, everything if, no, what we're doing, we're not we're not going to be approving anything tonight. All all that's happening now is a procedural mechanism where we're going to accept the application, mm -hmm. refer both applications out to the planning board for a complete review, and set the public hearing on the variance. They do. Good. Thank right. you. And then those resolutions are in your packet. They're all prepared and ready to go if if, mm -hmm. if they're approved. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and I just add to that that, that the application for the height um, variations is also going to be referred to the county planning department right. as our uh, certain actions. That's also referred so to. You'll have, so no one is, we're not asking you to make any decision until you have a lot of feedback from your local planning board on both matters and I from the county that. planning yep. board. Yep. So, Thank you. Um, you'll have plenty of time to review it. <laughs> and, yeah, the referral to the county under 239M is in the resolution also. Yeah. That it? Very good? I'm good. It's good. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you. We thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tom, you want to say anything? No, they do it on the agenda. I'm here, Al. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate the, uh, the time and uh, getting this project moved forward. Okay. I'll hand you over to Larry. Oh, Larry, your wife called. <laughs> she did, yeah. She texted. <laughs> Bring home milk, Larry. <laughs> we won't share the substance of the text. <laughs> Okay, where we're at. Okay, resolutions. Oh. <coughs> um, just to, uh, since we're kicking off with two resolutions resolving a tax tertiary matter, I just want to make um, clear so everybody understands. The settlement of this case, it's really not a settlement. The, the, the outcome is based upon a decision that was issued by the Supreme Court on these certs, on these two matters. Uh, 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 back in 21, um, so uh, it predates it, it predates us. But in any event, uh, the um, the numbers that were reached here, the, the decision didn't specify the the numbers. So uh, we had to do a little backtracking to come up with what the proper 
reduced assessed uh, assessment will be on each of these um, based upon uh, based upon the, the the sales that we had for them, and that's the reason why the the board uh, the the court reached the decision it did apparently. So uh, originally, uh, the, this board approved uh, consent judgments uh, for uh, us to sign, but um, when I reviewed, when I went back over it again, um, and I discussed the same with petitioner's counsel, the uh, the distribution among the among the parcels was inaccurate. So the overall uh, assessment, uh, reduced assessment kind of remains the same. It's just the way it's distributed among the two parcels has changed. And that's the reason for the updated resolution. Okay, Nicole, you're in. Resolution 11-1-1 of 2022, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to amend resolution 10-3-1 of 2022, allowing Vandewater and Vandewater LLP Kyle W. Barnett Esquire to enter into a consent order and judgment to settle the tax certiorari proceedings brought by East Park Mobile Home Park Sales and Court against the Town of Hyde Park for the tax year 2019 to reflect a change in the property ownership, property address name, and assessment values. They have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11 1 2 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to amend Resolution 10 3 2 of 2022 to allow Vanderwater and Vanderwater LLP Kyle W. Barnett Esquire of Council to enter into the consent order and judgment to settle the tax territoria uh, proceedings brought by Market Street Mobile Home Park LLC against the Town of Hyde Park for the tax year 2021 and 2022 reflect a change in the property address name and assessment values. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11 1-3 of 2022, <clears throat> resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to amend the 2022 listing of electrical inspectors for the Town of Hyde Park. Okay, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11-1-4 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to set a public hearing for special districts benefit assessment rolls. Okay, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11 1 5 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park. Uh, town supervisor to submit a statement of unpaid charges to the Dutchess County real property tax for inclusion on the 2023 tax bills in accordance with the provisions of town law. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Resolution 11 1-6 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to appoint Megan Cardinal uh, um, as a permanent full-time account clerk for the Town of Hyde Park Personnel Department. Provisional. What? Oh, oh, I see it says provisional here and then permanent there. Got it. Could have picked that. Provisional full-time. Mm -hmm. Okay, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11-1-7 of 2022, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to acknowledge the res resignation of Town of Hyde Park Police Officer Todd R. Gotcha. Chacha. Chicha. 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 Oh, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Any opposed? No. <clears throat> Resolution 
Resolution 11-1-8 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of High Park Town Board to accept on behalf of the Town of High Park Police Department grant funding from the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice for the body-worn cameras for the High Park Police Department. Supervisor, can I just talk about that real quick before you go? Yeah, I was probably going to say the same thing you were going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work has gone into this, and I'm really proud of where we've come from. And I want everyone to know what, uh, what, what I've done and the town has done. And, um, so quickly, I want to just thank Todd Jika for his service. Todd uh, came to us after retiring full-time from the town of Poughkeepsie Police Department. Uh, and he has finally sold his home here and is building a home in Tennessee. So Todd is actually he's in Tennessee as, as we speak now. But... He was a great asset to the police department and, and did a lot of training with us. So I just wanted to thank him for his service. Um, I'm really excited about this resolution and, and about this uh, whole body worn camera program coming to the town. Uh, back in 2020, Governor Cuomo um, enacted Executive Law 203, which made all police departments sit back and look at how they conduct business, um, involve the community in this, the town board in this. Uh, Neil Krupnik was on, on the board with me. Um, with many members of our, our community. And one of the things we acknowledged was that we needed uh, body-worn cameras. We wanted body-worn cameras for transparency. We wanted body-worn cameras for prosecution of cases. It assists the district attorney's office in prosecuting cases. And it also helps with our insurance company because by having these body-worn cameras to be able to record events that occur at a scene, it helps deal with different lawsuits and maybe prevent some lawsuits from coming. Uh, just like anything else, anything that's good comes with a very large price tag. So to purchase 20 body-worn cameras, Axon cameras, uh, that comes with 20 tasers and 20 sensors for the holsters. Um, if we're going to do it, I feel that we need to do it correctly and not do it just to buy a camera, just to have a camera to say we have one. So Axon is the number one uh, body-worn camera company in, in the country. Uh, many of the videos that you see online when there's police involvement, you'll see Axon symbol in the bottom corner. So these camera systems uh, work with anyone within 25 feet. If someone pulls out a taser and turns on their taser, everybody's camera will come on. If any officer pulls their gun out of their holster, the cameras automatically come on. So it takes away the human error of, oh, I forgot to turn my camera on. They automatically come on and everyone's camera within 25 feet will come on. Uh, these are the same camera systems that the state police are using. Dutchess County Sheriff's just um, ordered their cameras, as well as almost every police department in Dutchess County. So these cameras with the tasers and the sensors are going to cost approximately $41,000 per year. Um, we applied for the Bureau of Justice Assistance grant. Um, I spent probably 11, 11 or 12 hours on the phone with Dave Jenkins from Millennium Strategies, who is the uh, grant writer that, that this town board hired. Uh, I was his very first phone call the day after the meeting. He didn't even know that um, you guys approved it the night before, and I started working with him right away. So I wanted to get on that list first. Um, so him and I spent 11 or 12 hours writing this grant. He wrote a 34-page grant uh, with me. And um, I'm very proud to say that we received $40,000. You um, Each agency could apply for $2,000 per camera. So we got the max amount uh, that we applied for, and we are one of 29 police departments in the entire country to receive this grant. So that is, I, uh, there's a lot of police departments uh, in the state that are very jealous of me, and I've gotten a few of those phone calls. I uh, want to know how we did it. So I'm not giving away my secrets yet because there's still more stuff I want to get. So um, <laughs> I'm very excited about, about this grant. So with this grant, this is a 36-month grant. We're going to receive approximately $13,333 per year um, for this grant to help offset the 40, almost $41,000 uh, per year. So along with that, um, in 2018, I started pushing for body-worn cameras even before I was chief, and we really pushed hard um, on 2020 after police reform, and I started pushing the county so hard, they said, all right, great, you're going to be the lead person in Dutchess County to um, be in charge of a body-worn camera initiative that Dutchess County is, is examining. So um, I've worked with Kenny Roman and Sean Castano now at the county with the Dutchess Chiefs Association, and Marcus jumped right on board um, with us, realizing that this was a gap that needed to be covered, and Marcus wanted to help in any way that he could. So we went back and forth and spent a lot of time 
uh, receiving quotes from all the police departments in Dutchess County. And um, we will be receiving a $58,000 uh, one-time award to help initiate, train, and implement a body-worn camera policy and program. So uh, with both of these funding sources, uh, the county and as well as the Bureau of Justice um, Assistance Grant, we are not going to have to make one payment until May of 2025. If we started this program on January 1st, we wouldn't need one payment till 28 months into this program if we utilize both grant, growth grants and, and all the money that we received, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm just so happy that this is what's going to finally help us. I know that money's always been a problem with the last board, this board. Um, money is always the number one problem, and I'm out trying to find grant funding anywhere I can, and I'm shaking every bush that I can shake and shaking every hand that I can shake, uh, and I'm really, really excited that, that the town has been awarded this grant. So I didn't want this to just be like another resolution that people look at and say, oh, yeah, they got money. I wanted to see a little bit of history of, of how long we've been fighting for this money, and I want to give kudos to the, to the grant writers. Dave Jenkins and I, like I said, we work tirelessly on this, even – to 10, 11 o'clock at night uh, when he was home with his kids and I was home with mine and we were trying to, to write this grant because we all know that there's time frames for these grants. So uh, him and I have written a couple other grants that we're, we're hopeful that, that we may have as much success as this, but um, it definitely paid off by helping, uh, by having this board hire a grant writer. I've never worked with a grant writer before, um, so it was, it was exciting for me to, to work with somebody who does this on a daily basis. And uh, we did this together, and, and I'm just very excited and uh, proud of uh, the work that we put in. And um, again, thank you for letting me tell you a little bit about, about our body-worn camera policy and procedure and programs. Does anyone have any questions? You're the only one I'll let steal my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, when, when do you think this is going to be actually initiated? So we're negotiating right now. Obviously, it's a collective bargaining issue with the, the union. We have agreed to... Uh, the executive board of the union and myself and um, Stu Waxman have agreed on a policy that we're all comfortable with. Uh, the PBA will be voting on this on Wednesday. Once the PBA votes on this and the town votes on it, um, I can send this, this um, body-worn camera policy off to BJA and they will start, start our funding. So if we, if we do this and we sign the contract, I'm hoping to start this the early part of, of 2023. Um, is there, any, is there your, any supply chain problems with the, getting the product and everything? <laughs> well, like let's just say that, that I've helped Axon make a lot of money for this, so they've promised me that I will be at the top of the list to get these cameras. So um, there are some issues, but it's not with the cameras, it's with the chargers. So we will have individual chargers for a little while to be able to use, and then after the, the big chargers come in, then we'll be able to get those large chargers. So with this, with this program, it's a five-year lease. And with that five-year lease, every two and a half years, we will get the newest camera system. So um, if they come out with the newest, greatest camera system, in two and a half years into this contract, they will give us that no charge, all the upgrades for the cameras. So this includes training, this includes storage, this includes um, licensing fees, it includes everything from, from A to Z to start this program. So I, I tried to calculate in every single thing that we would need in here, including training, and uh, shipping and storage and, and um, so everything should and, be and also the maintenance price. of if something happens yep. so if, it, if it's broken by human error if someone uh, purposely throws it and breaks it then we have to cover the camera the cameras aren't very expensive but if it's broken in the normal course of uh, duty then that will be covered um, another good piece about this I could talk about this all night uh, <laughs> with um, our taser so if we have to deploy a taser and uh, in the past, I had to buy a cartridge, which was about $7.77 a cartridge. Now I take that cartridge, I send the report to Taser, they send me a brand new cartridge for free. They provide us with 40 training cartridges per year, so we won't have to purchase cartridges for training, we won't have to purchase new cartridges if we utilize the Taser. Um, so there, there's a lot of benefits for this package, um, and that's why I feel this is the best package for, for the police department and for the town uh, moving forward. All right, one other question, and I won't yes. bother you after that. That's okay. I, I'll talk all night. Uh, no, as far as cover these inventory or whatever equipment mm -hmm. is that, do we add that to our your insur on our insurance policy? So if something happens where they get stolen or misplaced or something, or how how does that how does that the insurance part of it? And I don't have an answer for that. I I, I can talk to Jim about that and talk to our insurance carrier. All of our equipment that we have currently 
is insured by our insurance company. So even a, a radar unit in a car is insured. So um, I imagine that we will be able to to put this in, but I'm looking down the road in a couple of years, we should be able to reduce our our insurance for our carrier for, for liability insurance because they are pushing hard for all, all municipalities to have these too. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of things. We've come a long way and we're, we're continuing to progress and I'm trying to do as much as I can with as much grant funding as possible. So between um, now and the middle of 2023, hopefully uh, if you add up everything, I'll have over $400,000 in grants um, to cover personnel, to cover uh, the canine dog, to cover body worn cameras, uh, bulletproof helmets, um, uh, tactical stuff for um, EMS for our, our belts. We'll have tourniquets, uh, quick clot. Those are all coming to us on a grant. So uh, again, I've, I'm just shaking everything down, trying to get any little little thing I can. So it, it helps the town, it helps the taxpayers in the community. You know, and that's my job as, as the administrator of the police department to try to do provide the best service I can for this community at the lowest cost and lowest impact. So um, I, like I said, I'm really excited when I get to come here and talk about money that we're receiving. But this was kind of an extensive um, process and I wanted to, to make sure that we all understood and people at home understood um, how hard that this has been. But you know, hard work does pay off and it pays off at $98,000 for the town. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent job, Chief. Second. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Resolution 11-1-9 of 2022, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Supervisor to execute an extension for the crisis intervention shared service agreement between the County of Dutchess the Town of Hyde Park, and other specified municipalities within Dutchess County. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 11-1-10 of 2022, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to accept a donation from the Rotary Club of Hyde Park for the Town of Hyde Park Recreation Department's Trail Improvement Project at the Terwilliger entrance to the Winneke Nature, uh, Nature Preserve. Right, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11-1-11 11 of 2022, resolution acknowledging receipt of the request to est establish an open development area for phase two of Bellafield PUD and referring the matter to the planning board for its input and advice in accordance with the provisions of section 280-A4 of the town law. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 11-1-12 of 2022. Resolution acknowledging the receipt of an application for variations in height for six residential multifamily buildings in phase two of Bellafield PUD and referring the application to the town planning board for recommendation and to the county planning department under general municipal law 239-M and setting public hearing for request for December 12th, 2022. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Any opposed? Motion carried.